Hello, my name is Mathieu Lienard and welcome to the sixth episode of my series of videos about demoing my own lab on Amazon AWS, Pexip Infinity, and Amazon Echo. So in the last episodes, uh, I demo recording the Pexip Infinity video conference onto AWS S3 and AWS Media Store. In this episode, I want to discuss a little bit the pros and cons about using S3 or Media Store and when you should use one versus the other. So sorry, this won't be a demo. Uh, it will just be me talking, but I hope it will still be interesting and informative. So in both demos, I was interacting with Amazon Echo to use an Alexa skill and a Lambda function to interact with the Pexip Infinity uh, video conference using REST APIs and basically stream the video conference content using RTMP to the AWS encoder, which is AWS Media Live. And from there, depending on the demo, Media Live was sending the media to uh, S3 or Media Store. So let's start with S3, which was the first demo. So for the ones not familiar with AWS services, AWS S3 uh, is AWS object-based storage. Put simply, it's a simple file storage. So when I set Media Live to store the video content onto S3, I basically end up in my S3 bucket with a whole bunch of .ts files. So .ts files are MPEG transport stream files, which each uh, includes X seconds or X minutes of the videos. So once we are done with the recording, we got to do something about all those files. Because if I give you your recording in the form of 60 files or 60.ts files, each of them containing one minute of your one hour uh, meeting, you might not be happy about it. So this is where in the demo, I was using AWS Media Convert. And once the recording was completed, the meeting was over, the recording completed, I was creating a job into Media Convert to get all those files generated for the recording and convert them into one MPEG-4 uh, video file that then becomes usable. So to summarize it, you have the video encoder, AWS Media Live, which will store the video content into multiple .ts files into S3. And then you use AWS Media Convert to convert all that content into one more user-friendly MPEG-4 file, which you store back into uh, AWS S3. So that's one way of doing it. The other way, which I demoed in episode five, is to get the media encoder, so AWS Media Live, to send the video content not to S3, but to AWS Media Store. So what is AWS Media Store? Well, as you can guess from the name, AWS Media Store is a storage optimized for media. Now, that said, when you get uh, Media Live to send the video content to Media Store. On Media Store, you still end up with a whole bunch of .ts files in your container. But the big difference is that AWS Media Store will create a manifest for you, and that manifest will contain all the resolutions you will have uh, recorded to. So, for example, HD, SD, HD, Full HD, whatever. And for each of those resolutions, all the files that make up this recording. So with that, you can just feed your media player with the manifest. And within the player, you will select the resolution you want to uh, use to see the video content, and it will play all the files for you. So the great thing about Media Store is you don't have to run a conversion job maybe multiple conversion job because you would have to convert uh, to an SD MPEG file, to a HD, a full HD. With Media Store, you're just 
again, filling the player with the manifest and the media store will handle everything in the back for you. So you might wonder, well, if media store is that easy and convenient, why would I then record to S3 uh, and then having to, on top of the recording, run a conversion job? Well, Media Store will be very good for video on demand scenarios. Typically, you had a video conference between you and your partner as a webinar for your customers, and you want to make it available for the customers who couldn't join your webinar. That's the typical uh, scenario where Media Store will be the most appropriate. However, I think it is not really appropriate for all recording scenarios. As a unified communication consultant, the number one reason I'm deploying recording solution, although it's not for video, but for telephony, it's compliance. Compliance is obviously a totally different scenario than video on demand. In a compliance scenario, you might not care, for example, about adapting to the resolution a capability of the viewer. On the other hand, you might want to have your uh, video recording already processed and already prepackaged. Because if your legal department comes and say, give us the recording, we need to bring it to court, you might want to be able to say, sure, here it is. You might not want to say, uh, hold on a minute, I've got the recording in 60.ts files, I need to run a conversion job and then package it, and then I'll be able to give it to you. No, stop. You want to have the uh, recording already pre-packaged and ready to use. So I think there's place for both. And to summarize it very simply, I think if the reason you're recording is video on demand, then go with Media Store. If you want your recording into a media object, like an MPEG file, then record it to S3 and post-process your file to transcode them into one MPEG file that you would store back into S3. So that's it. This is what I wanted to discuss. It was not a demo, but I hope it was still useful. The next episode also won't be a demo. I want to quickly discuss why and how I think that in these scenarios of the previous demos, like streaming and recording, uh, cloud services like AWS are, I think, a game changer. So see you for the next discussion.